Hi everyone, welcome to Chekdolu Engineering College. Myself Divya, Assistant Professor from EC Department. Now I am here to give the lecture on linear integrated circuits. So in this series, we shall start our discussion with linear integrated circuits. So before going to know about an IC, we should know about the circuit. So circuit is made up of a lot of electronic components like transistors, resistors, capacitors, and diodes, which are connected to wires. And the circuit is used for specific applications. Suppose if an application demands a lot of electronic components, like thousands of electronic components, and we design a circuit in a PCB or in a breadboard, and then the size of the PCB or breadboard becomes very large. And if you use that PCB for certain applications, then the entire system becomes enlarged. So, earlier the electronic circuits were huge and bulky and not reliable. So, this figure represents the circuits with large size and the earlier computer with large size. So, nowadays, the size of the electronic gadgets becomes very small. Uh, nowadays, we are using some laptop computers, Samsung computers. So, what made the miniaturization of electronic gadgets possible is IC or integrated circuit. So, IC plays a major role in the miniaturization of electronic gadgets. So, earlier, the electronic circuits were prepared by using more number of components and the circuit were not reliable. So an attempt was made to fabricate the entire circuit on a single block of semiconductor called IC. So ICs have made the miniaturization of electronic gadgets possible. So here the figure represents the structure of an IC. By the use of ICs, the circuit becomes very small. And next, coming to the history of an IC, it was invented in the year of 1958 by Jock Kilby of Texas Instruments of ESA. And uh, first IC was used by the US Air Force. We already know first transistor was invented by Bretton and Shockley in 1948. And in 1952, Shockley invented first FET, FET transistor. And Jock Kilby won Nobel Prize in 2002 in physics for the miniaturization of electronic components. Uh, next, what, what is the definition of an IC? What is an IC? So IC is a miniature low-cost electronic circuit consisting of active and passive components that are irreparably joined together on a single crystal chip of silicon. So that means in a single silicon wafer, we can join both active and passive elements together. We have more number of applications for the ICs. Here are some of some of applications. So ICs are found in almost all gadgets like cars, televisions, CD players, and cell phones. Next, coming to the categorization of ICs or classification of ICs. So ICs can be grouped into two categories depending on the nature of the input signals. First one, linear ICs. Second one, digital ICs. So what is a linear IC? So in linear ICs, the input signals are analog signals, which change continuously or a range of values between maximum and minimum. So that means for linear ICs, we are applying the analog signals. In this case, the output is linearly varies in according with the input. So that is output is proportional to the input. So op amp is the best example for the linear IC. So op amp is also called as operational amplifier. We will discuss about the op amp in later sessions. Next second one is digital ICs. In digital ICs, the signals are digital signals that have only two values. That is, we have only zero and one. Uh, next, coming to the advantages of ICs, we have more number of advantages. First advantage is small size. Practically, the size of an IC is 
thousands of times smaller than the discrete circuit. Next, low cost. Thousands of silicon wafers consisting of more number of components are produced simultaneously. This one is uh, also called as mass production. In mass production, more number of silicon wafers are produced simultaneously. So due to this, the cost of an IC is very, very low and hence millions of ICs are now in use annually. Next third advantage is less weight. Number of components are fabricated on a single silicon wafer. Hence, the weight of an IC is very much less compared to the discrete circuit consisting of same number of components. Next, low supply voltages. ICs work at lower voltages, which avoids the need of large supply voltages. That means we need not give any higher voltages. Next, low power consumption. The power consumption of ICs is also very, very low. It consumes less power. Next, highly reliable. Due to the absence of shouldered connections and less interconnections, the ICs are highly reliable from the performance point of view. Next, match devices. In IC technology, the characteristics of devices can be matched to a high degree of accuracy. Next, fast speed. With ICs, various applications can work with great speed. This is mainly because of the absence of parasitic capacitances like internal capacitances in ICs. Thus, the ICs are used popularly because of versatility, flexibility, dependability, along with the above advantages. So next, fabrication technology. So the various technologies used to fabricate these ICs, mainly we have two fabrication technologies. First one, monolithic technology. Second one, hybrid technology. By using these technologies, we can fabricate the ICs. So in monolithic ICs, all the active as well as passive components along with interconnections are integrated on a single system. So here, monolithic means single stone or one stone. This is a Greek based word and this word is appropriate as the components are integrated on a single piece of silicon crystal. And this technology is also called as planar technology. And these ICs are classified as two types, that is bipolar ICs and unipolar ICs, depending on the transistors we are using. So if you are using some bipolar transistor, those ICs are called as bipolar ICs. If you are using some FETs, then that type of ICs are known as unipolar ICs. And depending on the isolation process, again, the bipolar ICs are classified as PN junction isolation ICs and dielectric isolation ICs. Next, hybrid ICs. In hybrid ICs, uh, the components and the chips are interconnected together and that's why these uh, ICs, these type of ICs are also called as multi-chip ICs. Hybrid ICs have better performance compared to the monolithic ICs, but the fabrication process is too expensive for mass production. So that means if you are uh, if you want some more number of ICs, the fabrication process is too expensive. So it is economical for small quantities. That means it is better choice for small quantities. Next classification of ICs. So based on the application, mainly ICs are classified as two types: linear ICs and digital ICs. Uh, mainly we are concentrating on linear ICs only uh, in this subject. Next, based on the fabrication techniques, ICs are classified as two types, monolithic ICs and hybrid ICs. And based on the technology, based on the transistors, ICs are classified as two types, DJTs and MOSFETs. And based on the device count, that means based on the active elements we are using, ICs again classified as five types, SSI, MSI, LSI, VLSI, and VLSI. Uh, this uh, uh, this uh, classification we will discuss in later sessions. So next, uh, let's recap. 
So ICs have made the miniaturization of electronic gadgets possible. And ICs are found in almost all gadgets. ICs can be grouped in two categories depending on the nature of the input signal. So that is linear ICs and digital ICs. And uh, we have more number of advantages of ICs and uh, the fabrication process and the classification of ICs are also discussed. Thank you.